Dear Minister Roderick O'Gorman, my name is Leslie Mukoko and I come from the Kingdom of Eswatini in Sub-Saharan Africa and I have been in Ireland for around five years now. I am one of the privileged few international protection applicants who has had the opportunity to attend college in Ireland, having studied in IT Carlo and presently studying in UCD, University College of Dublin, where I am doing sociology and social policy. I'm writing this letter to share my experience as a student in third level education and living in the abhorrent living conditions of direct provision during the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot has happened and changed everywhere world over. As the pandemic struck, a lot of new normal habits have been introduced and adopted by most people. An example in hand would be the wearing of face coverings, while a lot of older known habits have been done away with, such as hugs and normal handshakes are now a thing of the past. A lot of weaknesses have been exposed in most settings in institutions and or government. The economic stability has been tested big time and the ability of not only the Irish government but most governments in the whole world has been stretched to the limit and shown their strengths and failures practically as they practised the duty of care as a state. The big announcement was broadcast on the 12th of March 2020. The Taoiseach of the day then, Leo Varadkar, announced that gatherings of more than 100 people indoors should be cancelled. This message, just this portion of the message, meant disaster to the many students that are warehoused in the abhorrent direct provision system of accommodating asylum seekers in Ireland. A lot of other restrictions came along with the big announcement. Underneath the whole speech was a lot of hope and a way to safety for most people in Ireland. Statements like, we're all in this together, was supposed to mean good for the entire nation of Ireland, but unfortunately, it had no meaning at all for international protection applicants, aka asylum seekers. Most direct provision centres later had clusters of COVID-19 cases, a majority of which were not announced to the public by both print media and or television. Some good practice on providing meals where canteens were practised in most centres as takeaway meals began to be served. The major problem was the impossibility of observing social distancing due to the congregated nature of direct provision. Many asylum seekers still share bedrooms, toilets, showers, kitchens and dining areas with their resident strangers. Keeping two metres away social distancing measure from the next person is virtually impossible in a setting like direct provision. People still use communal toilets and communal showers in most centres. Lately, the government concerned have decided to keep as much secretive as possible news of potential or actual outbreaks in preference of moving people from one isolation hotel to another. While in level five, where traveling beyond five kilometers was prohibited, asylum seekers were moved and transferred to centers beyond hundreds of kilometers without being quarantined even. The question remains, are we really all in this together? As an asylum seeker, student in direct provision, I fully appreciate the fact that education is a human right as enshrined in the UN Human Rights Charter, and so is seeking asylum. But that is water under the bridge for the state organ IPAS, International Protection Accommodation Services, as they were never at any stage concerned about protecting those rights, except to make sure that they warehouse as much people as they can in any room they lay their hands on in the form of unused hotels and or lodges. This arrangement does not exclude students within the system of direct provision. COVID-19 has brought to the fore all or most of the failures of this system of accommodating people in Ireland. Students who live in direct provision were literally stopped from being students. The need to move to online learning meant these students were left out because most direct provision centres do not have reliable Wi-Fi connections, and that is those that have, while most do not have connections altogether for use by the resident asylum seekers. All students in these centres had difficulties when the pandemic struck and worst when the lockdowns began. I personally had to miss writing final examination papers because of the restrictions and the over-exaggerated self-isolation arrangements in the centres, where in the beginning, people or residents were supposed to isolate with their roommates, which situation rendered students' inability to read, study, 
or write in the crammed rooms where there are no tables or chairs to do so. I share my bedroom with two other strangers and our beds are hardly half a metre away from each other and has no space for a table and a chair. Other student asylum seekers were traumatised. I was one of those by the arrangements that most centres adopted until the Massey Movement of Asylum Seekers in Ireland publicised the situation, which the Department of Justice, which was responsible for asylum seekers then, strongly objected to and denied this fact. Under the lock and key scenario, the asylum seekers were not supposed to move out of the centre, even for purposes of seeking a nearby Wi-Fi hotspot, as all local libraries were also closed due to the lockdown restrictions. The COVID-19 situation did not only expose the unworkability and not good for any purpose system of direct provision itself, but also brought to the fore the stark barriers to accessing education faced by students living in direct provision. The lack of necessary additional supports, such as simple study spaces with full access to the internet and Wi-Fi, the absence of suitable accommodation, the additional burdensome costs faced by many students in direct provision, all show the impact and dismal failure of this system during the pandemic. There was a nationally announced programme of dispensing or extending laptop loans to third level students in need, but of course there are conditions for asylum seeking students. One wonders and asks themselves what need assessment should be done for these students. Is the situation they are in by itself not enough evidence of their need? Discrimination was clearly publicised by the Minister of Education when he announced the €250 Euro award for third level students in the country. One would have thought that we are honestly all in this together, but no, that's not the case, as asylum seeking students in third level institutions are not eligible for support such as this and any other which the State Department's feel is not deserving for some groups or cohorts of the Irish society. This is a norm in most states that practice institutional racism. Ireland is no exception. The pandemic is not over yet and it is not entirely clear if it will end soon. And alas, asylum seeking students are still in their various direct provision centres awaiting to receive their examination dates and ultimately their results and information if they will progress to their next levels of furthering their educational pursuits. Judging from above situations where they cannot even connect to their online classes, your judgment is as good as mine. It's clear the government needed to do more to address the lack of needed supports for students living in direct provision centres. This has highlighted the additional barriers and challenges faced by some in a situation where we are all supposed to be in this together. Students like me and many others still stand there and await their mercy, feeling like sacrificial lambs. Congratulations to the resilient Asylum Seeker Students Class of 2020 who have made it through this challenging COVID-19 era. You have been sheroes and heroes. Power to the people. Kind regards, Leslie Makoko.